Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. A few videos ago I promised that I will review the new Azure Map Visual in Power BI. So here you go, I'm about to deliver on that promise. Sit tight, strap yourself in, get ready for a wild ride. Okay, in this review I'm not going to be talking about what the visual is and how it works. Microsoft did a really good job of explaining these things about this visual in the desktop review video on Microsoft's Power BI blog. So you can go ahead and watch that. And I think uh, the dude who talks about it does a really good job explaining what it does. And since there is not a whole lot of information and documentation on this map control, really whatever he says in that video is about all we can, all we know about what this visual can do. Instead, what I will do is give you my general impression from this control and uh, talk about whether I would use this in my reports right now, uh, if it's ready for prime time, and how does it compare with the visual that we already, uh, that's currently available by default in Power BI. The very first thing that you will notice when you work with this visual is that at least for the amount of data points that I have on this map, uh, the performance seems to be a lot better than the default Power BI visual. So here I am dragging it around and it responds, the responsiveness of this visual it appears to be or feels much better than the, the one that comes by default from Power BI. So if I were to enable my Power BI visual, so let me drill into that and zoom in a little bit. So me moving it around, I'm not sure if this video will do it justice, but it feels a little bit jerky. I only have a handful of state, I mean a handful, a handful of dots uh, one for every state plus a few extras, but uh, it just does not seem to be as smooth when I try to interact with the visual as the, the new Azure map. However, as soon as you start using the Azure map visual, you start running into limitations and issues to the point of uh, you got to ask yourself, what was the point of releasing it? Because um, it can only be useful in a handful of situations. So in the blog itself, they're talking about some of the limitations related to only be able to plot dots using lat and long. So right now it does not do geocoding. You cannot pass things like state, address, country. Uh, you have to pass lat and long. That is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's definitely a limitation, but for a V1, uh, I'd probably find, find, find a way to live with this. What I cannot live with is the following. You see how every dot on this map is colored with a different color? From what I've can, I can gather right now, there's no way for me to, to find, to specify a single color to color all these dots. And the reason for that is when I pull my state into the legend, if I do not have that, then I don't know, if I mouse over, I don't know what all of those data points are. Right, so now I have a single color, but you know, obviously we know what the states are, but for, for somebody who doesn't live in the US, they wouldn't know um, what individual dot is. So I would wanna be able to specify the caption. Okay, so now that I've pulled my province state into the legend field, you see that all bubbles are now colored in a different color. That's not exactly what I want. So I do get now ability to mouse over and see what the state is, but I don't wanna color them all in different colors. The other limitation is for your lat and long, even if you do have legend populated, lat and long have to be fields. They cannot be measures. So I have, I have a latitude measure as well as latitude field. So if I remove lat, that's a field in the table and add a measure, it wouldn't even take it. I, I'm not even able to drag it in there. So I have to have a physical lat and long fields calcul uh, uh, available in my data model to be able to use this map, which is okay. Mostly uh, I'm able to, to have all those things in my model. So the only thing that's really stopping me from using this visual right now is a bill is not being able to, to make sure that all of these colors have the same are consistent across all of the data points. Also, there is no ability to do conditional formatting. So if I wanted to do some sort of heat map and show some states in green, yellow and red in today's version or current version of the preview, that feature is not available. Now I just wanted to quickly compare and contrast it to the existing control. So here you see a similar behavior where every dot is represented by uh, a different color. 
However, I do have an ability to fix this and the way I would fix it. So in the current map, uh, we can either specify lead and long as a field or location as a field. So if I pull out lead and long, pull my state from legend into location, and then use lat and long as measures, then I'm able to have a consistent color across all of the bubbles. Moreover, I'm able to use conditional formatting and uh, color it based on whatever variable I want. So I assume that in subsequent version of Azure Map Visual, we will have the same feature as well, but in the way it stands right now, it's very limited when it comes to colors. And I can only see a very handful of scenarios where it wouldn't matter. Uh, most of the scenarios where I use a map, it would be a showstopper. So for me, the way the map is available right now, Azure Map, uh, I probably wouldn't be able to use it. One of the features of the Azure Map that I was raving about in my prior video was ability to have a more fine-grained control over the bubble size. So as we're looking at the old map, we see that the... So here we're looking at number of confirmed cases by state. So here we have um, 1.984 confirmed cases for Wyoming. We have 2,000 for Montana, and we have 12,000 for Idaho. And as you can see, all th three of these dots have roughly the same size. So now let's take a look at the new map or Azure map, and we can see that these dots are a little bit better represented. So I could see that Wyoming is definitely smaller than Idaho. And I have three different algorithms for me to play with when I try to specify the size of the bubble. So the first one is um, linear. And here, if I, if I use the min size of, let's say, 2 and max size of, let's say, 30, then that gives me quite a bit of a spread. So I could definitely see that Idaho is a bigger bubble than Wyoming, even in a linear approach. Now that makes it very difficult for me to mouse over, which by the way, is one of the issues that I'm having with this control. You could see that right now, the mouse pointer looks like a hand. And then when you mouse over, it's it changes into the index finger point. That's cool, but it, it's not always easy for a smaller, and sometimes it takes me a couple of tries to, to get that hand, to have that pointer to change. Even with linear, as you can see, I can, I'm able to specify bubble sizes that are a lot better than what we saw in the, in the original map. And then if I change it to log, given our data distribution, it's not very relevant. We don't have that big of a difference between min and max. But if I go to the third option, that gives me even a better way to highlight the variability in my data. So that alone, that feature alone, would make me switch to this map control instantaneously, provided all of those issues that I mentioned before are addressed. The fact that this is being added to the map makes me feel really good and very positive that over time this map will become a great map, provided we can figure out all the licensing costs and other things that I'm worried will come uh, after this map becomes GA. Another thing about this map is ability to do a bar chart. In my original video, I talked about how I'm a little skeptical about how useful this would be. So if I switch it from bubble to bar chart, uh, you see how the map is now tilted and I can change the thing that's called the pitch. And I could zoom in. I don't know, guys, you make your own decisions. I don't find these bars to be particularly intuitive. I would take the normal bubble bubble every single time. I would gladly sacrifice this feature for having a much more robust color control on this map visual. Now, there is one way that I was able to get this map become completely crazy acting, and that is by me turning on traffic, real traffic. So you see here, there is an option for me to turn on traffic layer. If you're zoomed in on the whole country and you have that option on, you will see that one of the options is to report incidents and traffic control. So if I were to turn this on, this whole map will freeze my entire machine and I have a monster of a laptop. So on my laptop, when I turn it on, I'm not gonna do this in this video, you guys are welcome to try it, but if you're doing it at, a, at this level, maybe if you're zoomed in and looking at one city in the demo, 
the guy who was introducing this feature was zoomed in on just Chicago and it worked. It seemed pretty snappy and pretty responsive. When I turned this on, literally the whole thing was unresponsive and it took me several minutes to turn it off and wait for, for the computer to calm down before the desktop became responsive again. So my advice for you right now, if your data points are spread across the country, don't even try to use the traffic layer because this will introduce serious performance issues to your, to your, to your report. Okay, don't want to make this too long. I think you guys get the, get the idea of how I feel about this thing. I think it's really promising. Definitely not ready for prime time. So I'm not quite sure why Microsoft released it in preview yet as uh, the limitations with colors, I think is, uh, is going to be a showstopper for a lot of cases. So I think it's good that they made it available just to pique our interest. And I think there's a lot of things in this control that are really, really promising. So can't wait for the V2, V3 of this control. And definitely we have to get a lot of more clarity on the licensing and costs behind it. I think Microsoft has to tell us right now whether this will, free, this will be free uh, always or whether it's going to be free just in preview. And there's going to be some other monetization mechanism behind it that we need to start planning for because you can't whet my appetite with some of these features and then tell me it's going to be super prohibitively expensive. So hope you found this uh, review informative and interesting and uh, I'm hoping to see you back soon. Thanks. Bye.